good morning and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is a great day to be with you guys. It's a Sunday, so we thought we would uh, kind of just check in with you and wish you Merry Christmas and tell you we're thinking about you. You know, Christmas here at the Mead Home, <laughs> it gets pretty crazy. It's full of laughter and, and just having fun and lots and lots of presents, right? The Meads are known for giving gifts. We love to give gifts. Matter of fact, Pastor Andy and I were talking about what was the best, you know, the most valuable gift that you'd ever been given, right? That's just stayed with you all these years. And, and we said that it was the gift of salvation that was given to us through Jesus Christ. You know, that gift meant everything to us. And we got to thinking about that. And, and that, that drew us over to the scripture of John 3, 16, a very popular uh, verse. Many of you know it. But it helps to explain the gift that God gives us at this Christmas. Well, this verse is important because it explains the reason for Christmas. It explains why history was divided into A.D. and B.C., it summarizes the Bible in one single sentence. It tells how to settle your eternal destiny in one verse. And here's the verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the most famous verse in the Bible. Well, that's wonderful. Now, this Christmas, we want to just take a quick look at that Bible verse with you, right? To see some of the great truths that it talks about. And this first verse starts out, this first line starts out that God so loved the world. And what he's saying to you and I is that we can experience the greatest love that we've ever known, right? That this, this word that he used loved in the Greek actually denotes this like strong intensity, right? In other words, it means that nobody's going to love you like that. This, this is, he, God loves us extravagant, you know, extravagantly, over the top, right? It's just beyond our, even our comprehension. Matter of fact, there's no man or woman or even a child that could love you like God does. And I really don't know where you are today. I don't know if you're with special people as you celebrate this Christmas, or if you're all by yourself because you're far away from home. Maybe you're military. But you see, the Holy Spirit wants to remind you this Christmas that God is with you and that he loves you unconditionally and you're so important to him. Well, something else I'd like to point out in this incredible verse is that God's love is universal. It's global. The Bible says that God so loved the world, not just good people, not just one race of people or one ethnic group, but he loves the world. You know, the Population Reference Bureau tells us that in all of history, about 117 billion people have lived and God has loved every one of them. God has never made a person he didn't love. If you're breathing right now, if your heart is beating, it means that God loves you. Psalm 145 says, the Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all of his creation. I love that verse. You wouldn't have anything if God didn't love you. You and I, we wouldn't even exist. There's no place that you can be where God's love isn't. His arms are wide enough to hold you and everything that's going on in your life. You see, there may be times that you feel alone, but you're never really alone. Psalm 139, David says, I cannot run away from God's presence in any direction because it's that wide. You know, the last three years have been tough years. There's the pandemic and sicknesses that came with that, anxiety, economic and political disruption, inflation, and now a looming recession. A lot of people have been hit hard and some have even hit bottom. On top of that, people have suffered hurt. And when people get hurt, they often build barriers. Sometimes they build barriers against God and God's love can overcome every barrier. Now, I don't know how you've been hurt this last year or last few years. Maybe you've been hurt by a job or a betrayal or a family member or a marriage. Maybe you've been hurt by religion. Maybe you've been hurt by a church, maybe even by this church. Don't let that keep you from God. You know, sometimes shame and guilt can cause you to have a barrier between you and God and His love for you. Like, well, I've just messed up too much. I'm too broken and so God really can't use me, but that's not true. God's love is the greatest love you'll ever have. He can restore, He can heal, and He loves to give second chances. 
One more thing I want you to notice about this amazing verse. Listen to what Sharon says. Gosh, God's love is tremendous. But you know, also his sacrifice, it's so great, isn't it? You know, in that scripture we were reading in here, it said that God sent his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, right? And what I want you to notice, that at this Christmas time, that he didn't just send an angel or a prophet or a teacher, he sent his only son. He didn't send some representative, he came himself, God in the flesh. God is human form, which is Jesus Christ. And you know, friends, this is an exact opposite of the fairy tales that we get told, right? How people always will die for kings or queens <laughs> to try to protect them or something. But in the good news story, the king dies for us, his people. You know, there's an old additive that says, if you want something done, right, you got to do it yourself. Well, God did that. He came himself in the form of Jesus Christ as a human. He was like us in all ways, but without sin. He wasn't some ghost or avatar. No, 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 he didn't just come halfway. He came all the way. And that's the good news that he's given to us at this Christmas time. He came to save the world and that means you, my friend. And that means me. And every time we remember that, it changes everything. You see, he sees us in the good times and the bad times. When we, when we fall short, when we're doing good, he's always watching over us and he sees us. And we don't repel him. He loves us so much that he wants a relationship with you. He wants to be connected with you. And this is incredible news to, for you and me. And so at this Christmas time, we need to understand that and to, and to understand the full meaning of that. You see, when I get with my family and my friends, I'll hear them often refer to baby Jesus, right? Uh, they, they, uh, they talk about him and as a slang, oh yeah, that's baby Jesus' birthday, right? And we get a good laugh of it, but really, when you look at it in the backdrop of John 3, 16, it changes how you celebrate Christmas. It puts a, a different spin to it, doesn't it? You see, Jesus is the reason that we celebrate Christmas. Now, let me ask you a very personal question this Christmas morning. Have you unwrapped the greatest gift that's offered to you? Have you responded by accepting the gift of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ? The gift of forgiveness and of freedom, right? Have you accepted that? Have you unwrapped that? If you're not sure, or if you feel like God, well, he's a million miles away, then I want you to, to, to pray with me. And we're gonna uh, stop here in a moment and we're gonna pray. And I want you to know that the greatest gift is there for you but until you accept that gift and until you unwrap it you really don't have it and you can do all that through a simple prayer so as we get close here and we end this time with you in prayer those of you that feel far God wants you to come home he's calling to you right so let's just take a moment and bow our heads right now father God I thank you I thank you Lord Holy Spirit I ask that you come right now that you would work through the, uh, through the airways, Lord, of this communication. That those that are listening, Father, that we might be reminded of the greatest gift that you've given us, that you gave us your son, Jesus. And that he's not just a baby in a manger, but he's meant to be unwrapped and experienced in all walks of life, all 365 days of the year, right? Thank you, Father. Thank you for that. And those of you that are far and you want to come home, you just say this right where you're at. He hears you. He's right there with you. Matter of fact, wherever you are, if you're in your, your kitchen or your car, you know, in your home, he's with you. And so you just, just quietly where you are, just say, Father God, go ahead. Father God, I accept your son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, the best way I know how, I ask that you'd forgive me for my sins those places that have fallen short. And I ask you to come and to lead me from this day forward. Now, Father, those that were praying those prayers, I thank you that you say you seal it in their heart, that prayer, and that you write their name in the book of life. And so, Father, I rejoice with them, but I also rejoice with all my brothers and sisters in Christ. For today is a marvelous day a day where we will unwrap and remember 
who you are, Jesus, and all that you have done in our lives. And we are thankful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, congratulations if you prayed that prayer with Pastor Sharon. Sharon and I are honored to share this Christmas day with you. Now, we'll see you next week on January 1st, 2023. We begin a brand new series, Prayer Will Change Your Life. Hope to see you there. We love you and we thank God for you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.